promise, problem, provision. Consider Moses and the children of Israel fleeing from Pharaoh and brutal slavery. They had been delivered from 400 years of slavery by 10 plagues that crushed Egypt, the most powerful nation on the face of the earth at that time. They were led by the cloud by day and the fire by night. I emphasize that for people who say God would never lead you into a problem. Children of Israel had to follow the cloud by day and the fire by night because that was God's heating and air conditioning system. <laughs> they were taken by the hand of God to a position where the Red Sea was before them and nothing but the desert was behind them. This was God's faith seminar. Tactically, it was a trap. The Red Sea was in front of them. Pharaoh and his army was behind them. They were in an impossible situation. Have you ever been there? God gave Israel and you three options. Surrender to the crisis, fight the undefeatable foe, or trust in God to deliver you from the enemies that present themselves and to wipe them out. Those are the three options. Moses gave Israel and the believers in the 21st century that formula for victory. You will see your enemies no more. When God takes care of your enemies, they're gone forever. There are people in this auditorium and those watching by television in America and around the world who, like the children of Israel, find themselves in an impossible situation. You have a vicious problem for which you have no answer. God's formula is this, do not be afraid. Stand still, do your duty. Trust God for a miracle answer. Our God is a way maker. Our God is a chain breaker. Our God is the sea walker. Our God is the blind man healer. He is almighty. He is all powerful. He is all knowing. He is the king of all kings and he is the Lord of all lords. He extends today the royal invitation to you. Call upon me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things that you know not. He's higher than the highest. He's greater than the greatest. He's stronger than the strongest. Our God is an awesome God. Give him praise in the house of God. The fact how we conduct ourselves in the problem will determine how long we stay in the problem. Is it permanent or short-lived? We have a problem, America. We have a problem. The provision is get off the couch and go vote for candidates who are for America and against socialism. <laughs> vote the Bible. Vote the Bible. Vote the Bible. Send career politicians home forever. They cause this problem. They are not part of the solution. Now let's talk about solving the problem. How many of you here and those watching by television across the nation have ever had a problem? Let me see your hand. Some of you don't. God love you. Some of you have a problem right now. But I assure you, you're headed for one. I repeat, how you react in the problem determines how long you're going to stay in the problem. Your life will be measured by the problems you solve or the problems you create. Continue the concept. How you see the problem is the problem. A son came home from college wearing the latest clothes. The father met him on the front porch and said, son, you look like a fool in those clothes. At that exact moment, Miss Jones, the neighbor, was walking by, and she said, Hi, Joe. It's good to see you. You're looking more like your father every day. <laughs> Joe said, Yes, my dad was just telling me that. <laughs> Point. <laughs> the father thought he looked like a fool. The son looked like he was in style. There are two points of view. Listen. You might want to write this down in your Bible. 
People can be different from you without being wrong. Whoa! <laughs> not a radical statement. How many of you know people that they just have to be right about everything all the time? Mm, don't be afraid to raise your hand. I'll repeat how you see the problem is the problem. A newspaper carried the story of two young men who were engaged. Both of them got jilted. One of the young men faced the problem this way. He went out and jumped off a bridge and drowned himself. The other one wrote one of those Willie Nelson, someone did someone wrong kind of song. He received $500,000 in royalty and friends with $500,000. You can forget anybody. <laughs> now let's talk about how to conduct yourself in the problem determines how long you stay in the problem. Here's proof. The children of Israel had the problem of the wilderness. They were there for 40 years. Why? Because they were full of rebellion. Every time Moses gave them a law, they murmured. They complained, and God himself called them a stiff-necked people. That means stubborn. God didn't sit in heaven wringing his hands and drinking maylots, saying, oh, they're not obeying me. His response was, take another lap around Mount Sinai. <laughs> they got back, and they went to Moses. We hate this manna. You see, their, their, their mind is still not with the program. We hate this manna. I know your wife has put out a cookbook manual, 101 Ways to Fix Manna. We don't like manna. <laughs> Around the mountain you go. One more time. One more time. Finally, after 40 years, they came to the provision. It was the promised land. It was right across the Jordan River. They sent a committee over there, and they found giants, and they came back full of fear, and it made God angry because he had given them 10 miracles to get them out of Egypt. They had had a miracle walk for the last 40 years, and here they were a few feet from the provision, and God said, you're not going in. Everyone 20 years of age and down is going to go over there with Joshua. The rest of you are going to wander out here in this wilderness until you die here. The point is, if you refuse to accept God's provision, he will let you wander in a problem for the rest of your life. Just like Israel. When you get to the place where God wants you to be, you will come to a point of decision. Am I going to go into this next level or am I just going to put it on cruise control for the rest of my life? The choice is yours. God says, will you obey? And if you don't, you just take another lap. You know, Christians confuse motion with progress, activity with progress. It goes like this, praise God, I'm going to three Bible studies, I've just been to four seminars, I'm going to two crusades this year. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> You're walking in circles. You've got the same problem, you're just going over and over and over. You're not getting the message. Many of you are in the problem, and you might die in the problem because you're going in circles. You think your hyperactivity is spirituality. You need to sit down until you hear a word from the Lord saying, this is the way, walk in it. You won't turn loose of the past. We remember the leeks and the garlics and how good all of that was. We remember the good old days when Ronald Reagan was president, <laughs> when America was the shining city on the hill, when gasoline was 50 cents a gallon, when criminals were sent to jail and illegal aliens were deported back to the place where they came from. But we don't have that wonderful situation here because the American people have gone to sleep at the switch. You need to know the career politicians make dictators. We need fresh blood in Washington to show us a new way. Paul said, forgetting those things which are the past, I press to the mark of the prize of the high calling. 
If God has forgotten your past, why don't you? Your past is history. Your future is a mystery. Today is a gift from God. That's why we call it the present. Live every day with the glory of God, with love, joy, peace, and power and purpose. To those who don't love America, there are planes leaving every hour. Get on one. We don't need you. How a promise problem provision works in your life. Practical applications. You get a promise. God is going to bless you financially. And the next day you lose your job. What is this? It's a problem. How are you going to react? The wrong way is nothing good ever happens for me. Poor me. Pity me. I'm going to call Pastor Hagee and tell him his sermon series on God's plan for my prosperity is a farce. <laughs> the right way. Glory to God. I've been fired. How can I get a better job unless I lose this one? <laughs> Let me take a little sidebar here and tell you the three promotions of God. It's good, better, and best. God always gives you something that's good. And when he's trying to give you something better, you hold on to something good like this. And God wants to give you something better, and he has to rip it out of your hands because, no, don't, don't take it. Don't take it from me. And he finally gets it away from you, and you have this, oh, God, something better. Never dreamed it could be this good, and God wants to give you the absolute best. He has to drag it out of your hands. And he gives you, and he says, oh, thank God. If God takes something from you, it's because he has something to give you that will make you forget everything he took from you. With the new year upon us, it's time to unlock the power of biblical fasting and transform your life. Do not be content going through this new year carrying the same burdens from your past. God has much more in store for your life and the lives of your loved ones. For your generous gift of any amount, we will send you the Unlocking the Power of Fasting devotional by Pastor Matt and a vial of anointing oil. For your gift of $150 or more in support of the ministry, you'll also receive the Unlocking the Power of Fasting journal, the Facts of Fasting sermon, and a Daily Truth perpetual calendar. You can experience a deeper, more powerful relationship with God that can only come through prayer and fasting. Send your best gift today. Call the number on your screen or visit jhm.org slash fasting. You get a promise. The Lord will teach you patience. Oh, dear God, I'm going to go by this in a hurry. What's coming? A problem. Bible proof. Tribulation works patience. Say that with me. Tribulation works patience. I saw a sign the other day that really agreed with my spirit. It said, antiques manufactured while you wait. <laughs> you're in a service right now. You're being blessed. You feel good. You're saying piously, Lord, I thank you. I'm not impatient like my pastor. After service, you go out to the car. You accidentally slam your thumb in the car door. What is this? It's a problem. It's a test. Watch what comes out of your mouth. Because if it's not good stuff, this is going to happen another three Sundays in a row. <laughs> God gives you a promise. He's going to give you the love of your life in marriage. What's coming? Problem. problem. Anybody can be great for three hours on a date on Saturday night. The real person is home, locked in a steel cage, waiting to get out. Love at first sight is often cured by a second look. These two, saith God, shall be one. They go on a honeymoon and find out which one. One husband said, 
We live in a two-story house. She has her story, and I have my story. <laughs> Do you see salvation in a new light? What happens after you get saved? Problems. Problems. God's head. God wants to show you what's in you. You pray piously like this. Oh, Lord, if there's anything in my life that may be displeasing to you, I know you'll really have to search for it, but <laughs> if there's anything there that might, might be displeasing to you, show it to me. And God shows you. And you say, I rebuke you, devil. I rebuke you. <laughs> the blood of Jesus Christ. I want to give you 10 ways to shorten your stay in the problem in 10 minutes. First, take responsibility for your actions. Do not become a member of the no-fault society sweeping America. Look at the word responsible, response able. You are able to make an intelligent response to whatever happens to you. Winston Churchill said, the price of greatness is responsibility. Say that with me. The price of greatness is responsibility. Winston Churchill is the man who saved Western civilization in the 20th century. You are like you are because of what you are. It's called character. You are responsible for what you do, for what you say, and for how you act. If you want to be treated like an adult, act like an adult. Can I get a witness? <laughs> Secondly, you shorten your stay in the problem by being willing to work for what you want. God gave Israel one supernatural victory. It was Jericho, and they had to fight for every inch from there on to the promised land. Wealth without work will destroy you. Wealth without work will destroy you. America should know that by now. Father, if you want to destroy your child, give them everything they want without work. God provides worms for birds but it doesn't throw them down their throats. They have to get up and go get it. God works six days. Try it, you'll like it. <laughs> Thirdly, don't waste time fighting what you cannot change. Do you know why Israel didn't go back to Egypt? Not because they loved Moses, not because they even loved God, because God closed the Red Sea behind them. They couldn't go back. It's not because they were committed. There are some things in life that are spilt milk items. Nothing you can do can change it. All you need to do is move on. If you were abused as a child, it's tragic. It happened, but it's over. Move on. Have you gone through a bitter divorce? Move on. Have you been betrayed by a dear friend? Move on. Have you been in a business deal that went south? Move on. It cannot be changed God has something better for you. Put your hand in his hand. Everything's going to be all right. <laughs> Fourthly, when you're wrong, admit it and take the consequences. Stop playing the blame game. Stop being the eternal victim. When you stand before God, you are going to answer for yourself and no one else. Take charge of your life or someone else will. The fifth will extend your time in the problem by nursing a grudge and refusing forgiveness. There is in the Lord's Prayer this powerful phrase, forgive us as we forgive those. Forgiveness in the Bible is not optional. If you do not forgive others, God will not forgive you. Can you think of one person who has hurt you? The best way to get over it is to forgive them. Otherwise, you live in a penitentiary that they built for you. Forgiveness is the key that lets you out of the cage other people build for you. The way to have real peace is total forgiveness. Don't allow the opinions of other people to control you. Six, shorten your time in the problem by being generous to those who need your help. If you see someone that has a need and you can meet it, don't pray about it, meet it, meet it. Give and it shall be given unto you. The Bible teaches givers gain. How you treat someone in their day of trouble will determine how God treats you in your day of trouble. That's in the Bible.
Giving is the only proof you have that the cancer of greed does not control your soul. If something within you resents giving, it's not from God. You will die in the problem. Let's talk about tithing for 30 seconds. The churches in America, including this one, are full of debt Christians, D-E-B-T Christians. D-E-B-T is an acronym for doing everything but tithing. (laughs) Malachi 3 and 8, God calls you a thief. Will a man rob God? Yes, you have robbed me in the tithes and the offering. God has your picture on his bulletin board in heaven, mug shots. The thieves in San Antonio. (laughs) You're on that board. (laughs) Seven, let your mouth be ruled by the law of kindness. Learn to say please and thank you and excuse me. Even at home. Apologize if you must, even to your wife. Mm. She's your partner. She's not your possession. Ladies. Eight, you refuse to wallow in self-pity when life gives you a raw deal. Accept the fact that no one gets through life without some misfortune or sorrow. Self-pity is sin. It obliterates God and puts self on the throne. If you've been knocked flat of your back, get up. Dust yourself off. You're a child of God. The Bible says the righteous falls six times and gets up the seventh time. You're not defeated until you stay down. And sooner or later, you're going to have a problem that knocks you flat of your back. Get up in Jesus' name. You're a child of God. Nine. You shorten your time in the problem by listening. Jesus said, my sheep know my voice. This means giving people individual attention and putting your feelings aside, trying to see their point of view. When you read the Bible, listen for the voice of God. I'm going to tell you something very personal. Everything I have ever done in my life came in what I call one of these listening sessions. You pray, you read your Bible, and just sit there and say, Lord, what is it you want me to do? Boom! An idea comes into your brain that you just cannot get away from, and it changes your life forever. That's how this church was built. That's how Christians United for Israel started. Every person I met for six months said, you're a lunatic, that will never work. Now it is the largest pro-Israel organization on the face of the earth. (laughs) Lastly, be a peacemaker. The Bible says, don't let the sun go down on your wrath. Are you angry with someone? Stop pouting and be reconciled. And I hear this, oh, but I'm right. Do you want to be right or reconciled? Would you rather have peace than to run around with your trophy of I'm right? God sends the problem to produce brokenness in your spirit because only God can use broken things. It takes broken soil to produce a crop of wheat. It takes broken clouds to produce the rain. It takes broken bread to produce strength. An atom has to be broken to give an atomic bomb its power. If you are hard-hearted and calloused, God cannot use you. If you've never made a mistake, God cannot use you. If you're so full of yourself, people can't stand you, God can't use you. You have to be humble and broken before God. And then God can do the impossible through you. Quit worrying about who gets the credit for it and just do it because it's the good thing to do and the righteous thing to do. Can we stand to our feet?
How many of you can say, Pastor, I'm in the middle of a problem, and I'm willing to do whatever God desires to come out of the problem? If that describes you, let me see your hand. Now all lift your hands and pray this prayer with me. Heavenly Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I come before you today. I ask you to fill me with your peace, with your love, with your grace, that I might love other people, the body of Christ, as you loved us and gave yourself for us. Today, in the name of Jesus Christ, I'm walking straight through my problem based on the righteousness of God. Amen. Give the Lord praise in the house. I want to invite you to join us for live worship services each Sunday at 8.30 and 11 a.m. Central Standard Time, also at 6.30. Join us for worship and a gospel message from Cornerstone Church each week. You can watch by going online to jhm.org slash watch. Now stay tuned. Pastor Hagee is bringing a blessing. On Saturday, October 7th, while Israeli citizens celebrated the end of Sukkot, over 1,500 Iran-backed Hamas terrorists wage a coordinated and vicious attack against the nation of Israel. This is our time to show love and generosity for a nation suffering one of its darkest hours. October 7th was the deadliest day in Jewish history since the Holocaust. But make no mistake, Israel is shaken, but it is not defeated. Proceeds raised will address the humanitarian crisis resulting from this massacre. First responders and medical facilities are overwhelmed, and we need your help. Go to jhm.org slash standwithisrael to donate today and show your solidarity for the state of Israel and the Jewish people. Let it be known that Israel, you are not alone. You've been watching Hagee Ministries. And now, your blessing with Pastor John Hagee. And now, may the Lord bless you and may the Lord keep you. May the Lord make His face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you, giving you His peace. May you know without a shadow of a doubt that you have no need to harbor any rejection, pain, or resentment in your spirit, in your mind, or your speech. May you know that the grace of God, you have been made new through Christ Jesus. Walk in the love, the joy, and the peace that He alone has made possible for you. Live in divine confidence, knowing that you and God have an unconquerable future ahead and exciting walk down the paths of righteousness. Day by day, God will take you from glory to glory. Receive this blessing in the authority of Jesus' name. Amen and amen. <laughs>